There is a lot of really good pre-established theories in Naruto. I mean, Naruto has been around for almost 20 years. That's a lot of time for theories to get made. The best Naruto theories are the ones that you make with your friends, or in my case, the ones I make with my chat on Twitch. You see, when you talk about Naruto for 15 to 20 hours a week live, theories are gonna come up. And a theory I've never heard today came up in my Twitch chat, almost on a whim. And the best part about a theory coming up in a Twitch chat is that everybody gets to workshop it together. So I wish I could take credit for the entirety of this theory, but unfortunately I can't. Shout out to my Twitch chat for this video idea. This is all one long plug for you to go and follow it. This theory revolves around one of the most talked about and mysterious characters all throughout Naruto, Sakamo Hatake. You see, Sakamo Hatake is Kakashi's father and is said to be stronger than the three legendary Sanin combined. But the problem with Sakamo Hatake is that's basically all we know about him. He's listed as one of the strongest characters in the history of the naruto verse and yet we know next to nothing about him we know he was a hero of the second great ninja war and that he used a white chakra blade that got him the name the white fang and that is literally it well and the whole you know seppuku bit so when a character is introduced as very powerful but very mysterious and underexplained, people are going to theorize and today's theory is about who his father was but before we even get to touching that theory guys please for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell and while you guys are at it if you're looking for more nc hammer 23 content guys pop on over to my gaming channel NC Gamer 23. A bunch of people have been asking me to play video games in a YouTube format, so I've been playing fun games like Subnautica or Nightfall A Daring Journey. Hell, I've even been playing a brand new Vampire Battle Royale. Or if you like watching my live stream content but never seem to find the right time to get to me while I'm live, I also made an NC Hammer 23 VODs page where you can watch my streams offline. So Sakamo Hatake, the enigma of Naruto. He's a bit like if they told us about how strong Minato was and yet never told us about who Minato was. But there's a lot of questions that swirl around Sakamo, and they can range anywhere from what were his abilities, what was his life like, who was his wife, and why was Kakashi brought along when he was. But none of those are the questions we're going to be approaching today. No. Today we're approaching what I believe is the most important question of all. A. What is the Hatake clan? And B. Who is Sakamo's father? You see, the Hatake clan consists of Sakamo and Kakashi, and that's it. But the fact that they created two of the most powerful ninjas of all time seemed suspect to me. Why would such a no-name clan create such powerful ninja so consistently what if the hatake don't actually exist what if the hatake are simply the senju it sounds insane i know but stick with me here i actually have more points than even i believe i have let's start with the glaringly obvious point both sakamo and kakashi have white hair now white hair isn't particularly uncommon in the naruto verse there's sakamo kakashi jiraiya and then toby rama and that's pretty much it oh there's also swaggy to kimimaru and all the otsutsukis but the otsutsukis don't count and kimimaru doesn't really count either because he's part of the kaguya clan but regardless white White hair isn't crazy unheard of. So the fact that Sakamo and Tobirama both have white hair isn't enough to substantiate this claim, but it was enough to spark an interest in my mind. And then I started to think about it. Both Tobirama and Sakamo have white hair, but how would the time play out for Tobirama to be Sakamo's father? And wouldn't you know it, the time plays out perfectly. To explain this, I'm going to have to explain a little bit of Konoha history. The first great shinobi world war is what kills Tobirama and Hashirama. Tobirama dies about four years after Hashirama, towards the end of the first great shinobi world war, while Hashirama died at the beginning. Both the first and second great shinobi world wars were meant to resemble the first and second world war in many ways, from the politics of how it started to the fallout caused by them. But the biggest similarity between the two, and this has actually been confirmed by Kishimoto, was the difference in time between the two. There was roughly 20, 25 years between World War I and World War II, with World War I ending around 1920 and World War II starting around 1939. So in Naruto, there was 20 years between the first great and the second great Shinobi World Wars, meaning anybody who Tobirama could have fathered during his life, which ended at the end of the first great shinobi world war would have been at least 20 by the time the second great shinobi world war came around which would mean that sakamo hatake would absolutely be old enough to be the white fang in the hidden sand village he gained the nickname the white fang while in an offensive campaign in the land of wind where he killed sasori's parents so not only do sakamo and tobirama have similar hairstyles the timeline matches up and i know what you might be thinking sakamo would have to be older than that in order to be kakashi's father but that's actually not true you see we know kakashi is about 
13 during the Third Great Shinobi World War. At least he's 13 somewhere in the middle of the Third Great Shinobi World War, because he's 13 when he's sent out on the Kanabi Bridge mission, which is the mission that turns the war around for Konoha. So it's actually already a couple years into the Third Great Shinobi World War. And we know there's roughly a decade between the end of the Second Great Shinobi World War and the beginning of the third. So that would stand to reason that Kakashi was born somewhere within a year of the end of the Second Great Shinobi World War. Kinda like Sakamo had come home after an offensive campaign in the worst part of their world and decided to have a child. As to who the mother of Kakashi is, I've actually made theory videos about that that you can check out right about here. But regardless, a mid-20s Sakamo came home after one of the bloodiest campaigns in ninja history and decided to settle down. And that led to Kakashi. So once again, the timelines match up. And I know what you're saying, well, then that means Sakamo died in his early 30s. That's actually corroborated by the story. One, Sakamo doesn't look very old when he dies, but two, that's around the age that most people have children. Naruto is 32 in Boruto and has a 12 year old or a 13 year old. I forget how old Boruto is right now. Everyone else from the Konoha 13 is roughly that age and they all have kids. See, when you're a shinobi in your life isn't always guaranteed. I mean, Hiruzen was the oldest ever Hokage. That's why he was called the strongest Hokage of all time. You're going to have kids early because who knows if you're going to be able to do it later. So yeah, Sakamo probably committed suicide somewhere in his early 30s. But the fact that other ninjas are having babies around this age isn't the only corroboration. When Kakashi dies of chakra over usage in his fight against Nagato, he goes to Limbo, where Sakamo is waiting for him. And one of the first things Sakamo says to him is, who would have figured we both would have died so young? Implying that Sakamo died at a young age and also that him and Kakashi died at similar ages. Hence the we both. And Kakashi is just about 30 in Shippuden as well. So once again, with actually a lot of evidence, the timeline checks out. But let's talk about things that aren't cosmetic in calendars. Let's talk about power. You see, Tobirama is arguably one of the top, I'd say, seven strongest people of all time to come out of Konoha. Regarded as the fastest ninja alive while he was alive, not only because of the creation of Flying Raijin, but because that man was quick. And on top of all that, he was an incredibly practiced Kenjutsu master. Kenjutsu, for those who don't speak Naruto, is swords. Tobirama always carried a katana on him. It's how he killed Madara's brother. You remember? Flying Raijin Slice. And while yes, it was very much standard for people of Tobirama's era in the Warring States period to use swords, even amongst that era, Tobirama was incredibly well practiced. And you know, in what generation swords weren't as popular? Sakamo's. By the time Sakamo's generation came around to fighting, things like puppets and ninjutsu were much more common than swords. And yet Sakamo earned his name as the White Fang because of a one-handed chakra blade that he would swing. And when he swung it, white streaks of chakra would come out of it. He used his sword in his incredible speed to outpace and murder his enemies, giving him a run on sight order from the Hidden Stone. In fact, this run on sight order ran so deep when Hidden Stone Shinobi saw Kakashi, they feared it was the White Fang and began to run themselves. But what's truly crazy about that is Sakamo did the majority of his Shinobi work in the Hidden Sand. He had worldwide renown as a terrifyingly powerful ninja. He was arguably the ninja who carried the leaf through the Second Great Shinobi World War. So what seems more likely to you? Some no-name ninja happened to stumble into a bunch of power that allowed him to carry the leaf through an entire war, or was it Senju blood? See, we all know that the Senju name, and if you don't know this, please go check out my History of the Senju video, stands for a thousand skills or a thousand hands, because the Senju, unlike the Uchiha, diversified their skill base. It includes at Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, and Genjutsu. And while we don't know what Sakamo's abilities were, we can assume he was a well-rounded ninja. You simply would have to be to have a name like the White Fang in Kill Sasori's parents, who were both Anbu. But the real question becomes, why would Sakamo Hatsuke have the last name Hatsuke if his father was Tobirama Senju? I mean, Tsunade is the granddaughter of Hashirama, and she has the last name Senju, why would that not apply to Tobirama? Well, you see, Hashirama and Tobirama are vastly different people. You see, Hashirama is a bright and straightforward personality, like Naruto, while Tobirama 
is a bit more calculating. You see, without Tobirama, Hashirama would have given the Tailed Beast away for free, which wouldn't have given the Leaf the resources to make it through the First Great Shinobi World War relatively unscathed. Tobirama was also the person who created the Konoha Police Force and the Chunin exams and the Ninja Academy. He is arguably one of the greatest minds in the history of Naruto. And just like how it was his idea to sell the Bijou as opposed to give them away, it was his idea to disintegrate the Senju. You see, Tobirama wasn't nearly as forgiving of Madara as Hashirama was. Probably because Tobirama wasn't secretly sleeping with him like Hashirama was. But because Tobirama could see Madara for what he was, he saw that he wanted to be nothing like Madara. And while Madara, even though he had accepted being in Konoha and was still the head of the Uchiha clan, was reaching for separation from Konoha as a greater whole. Essentially, to Madara, the most important thing was the continuation of the strength of the Uchiha, whether that be in Konoha or not. Madara preached separationist views for the Uchiha to stay close to each other in order to keep their strength pure. And because of this, the Uchihas became more and more secluded. Long before they were cast to the outskirts of the city, they still did not breed outside of their own clan. It was the sentiment of both Hashirama and Tobirama, but mostly Tobirama, that people should take more pride in their village than their clan. Both Hashirama and Tobirama figured that the best way to become a one group was to get rid of the one thing that separated them, clans. So Hashirama and Tobirama disintegrated the Senju and said, marry outside of our clan, strengthen Konoha with our blood. Which is why you don't see Senju around. Technically, in Konoha Hiden, we found out that the Senju were no longer active. Meaning that as a clan, they've essentially disintegrated their hold in Konoha and simply become Konohanians. But like I said, Tobirama is more calculating than Hashirama. Tobirama identified that Madara was afraid of a Senju ruling class, one that would push the Uchiha down to the bottom of the barrel of power. And there was one thing on earth that Tobirama didn't want, Madara to be correct. You see, Tobirama had always felt vehemently about killing Madara, knowing one day that he would disrupt the peace that he and Hashirama fought so hard for. So, well, Hashirama did have a child, and that child later bred with an Uzumaki, and then boom, Tsunade. And since it was a lineage of men all the way down to Tsunade, she was born a Senju. Tobirama didn't want to make such a straightforward approach. Tobirama understood that any child he would have would be strong, and therefore become the upper echelon of Konoha. Only problem is, if this happens, Senju ruling class begins to appear. And then Madara is right, and then the Uchiha get mad. So one day when Tobirama does fall in love with some woman and has a child with her, he has this child take her last name, something he might have encouraged amongst his peers. You see, because even if the Senju did marry outside of their clan, a lot of the Senju were men. And Naruto plays by the same general rules of Earth where a woman will usually take a man's last name. So even if the Senju never married another Senju ever again, still about 50% of them would carry on the Senju name. So there would still be send you around. But what if Tobirama, hoping to disintegrate clan lines, encouraged his male clansmen to take their wives' names? Or at the very least, give their children their wives' names? So now, incredibly strong ninja would come from clans of no true regard. And thus, somebody like Sakamo Hatake is born. And sure, you can say that's a stretch, except it's really not. They look alike. The timelines match up. It lines up with the disappearance of the Senju and their powers are comparable. But if all of that isn't enough for you, there's still something else. Sakamo Hatake has always had a very unique outfit. Sure, for the most part, it's just your standard Jonin outfit. He's got a Jonin vest, the dark blue long shirt and pants, a couple of bandages, boom, he's a Jonin. He's even got the sandals. But there's one part of his outfit that is different from any other outfit we've seen in Naruto, except for one. You see, on Sakamo Hatake's left arm, he wears a half sleeve, a half sleeve over his dark blue long sleeve shirt. You see, this sleeve has always kind of perplexed me because there's no real reason for it. The sleeve is a white sleeve with red triangles around the bottom with the whirlpool symbol that all people wear in Konoha. Well, all shinobi that is. But why wear that? Did he have to sew it into his shirt? And if it is sewn into his shirt, where is it from? We've technically never seen Tobirama in the Hokage cloak. I'm not kidding. Look up Tobirama Hokage cloak. You will find 
no images. Except, of course, in the Hokage office, where the Hokage portraits are. But this is only a bust up of Tobirama. What if this half sleeve is the bottom half of Tobirama's Hokage cloak? At least the bottom half of his sleeve, his wrist part. It wouldn't be insane, no Hokage cloak is the same. Minato and Naruto have flames, Hashirama's is extra long, and it says first Hokage down the back. Tsunade's was a kimono. And this theory kind of makes sense because the only time we really see white cloth with red print is the Hokage's cloak. Nobody else in the village wears white with red outside of the Hokage. So what if a young Sakumo Hatake was bequeathed his father's cloak and sewed it into his Jonin vest as a symbol of homage to the great man who had made him. But then again, what do I know? It's not like Tobirama's older brother was the sole person responsible for making sure that the Land of Whirlpool's logo was on every Joni. Couldn't imagine Tobirama putting it on his Hokage cloak as an honorific to Hashirama who had just, I don't know, passed away. But hey, who knows? I could be wrong. But if you think I'm right, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you really think I'm right, guys, then go ahead and follow my gaming page, NC Gamer 23 for more NC Hammer 23 content, except this time, it's me playing video games. Listen, I know most Naruto theories are predicated around who's the father, but this all could have been avoided if Kishimoto literally just gave us one family tree.